Before Spotify, I found perfectly curated music only in my dreams. Now with 140 million subscribers creating playlists, I don't think we're alone now. Hi, I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Alex Underwood. He is the VP and Global Head of Strategic Partnerships and Verticals at Spotify. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we all recognize Spotify as a leading music streaming platform. What do you do as VP and Global Head of the agency partnerships? Yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful, I know. Um, no, essentially, I oversee a, a team that really develops and builds partnerships with the, uh, with the world's largest agencies and uh, brand advertisers at Spotify. Okay. Tell us how you use machine learning to curate playlists, suggest new songs and artists, that sort of thing. No, absolutely. Um, and I think it's, it's important to make a distinction that we, we do use machine learning, but often we use machine learning with our human curators as well. Um, so while we do have our algorithmic playlists that really lean into what we call our streaming intelligence. So if I take an example there, we have a quite a, a, a common or a famous playlist called Discover Weekly, which is almost the way I look at it. It's like your, your best friend making you a, a playlist every Monday of 30 songs that you probably haven't uh, streamed before. And it's primarily based on your streaming behaviors and habits, your streaming intelligence, but looking at people with similar taste profiles or similar listening habits as well and trying to identify those songs that you haven't streamed and putting them into a playlist for you and giving you that level of um, discovery and surprise every Monday. And they really fascinates me how deep um, and broad these sort of algorithms go as well. I think um, even just thinking about, say, if you, Tonya, um, not knowing anything about your, your streaming habits, but say if you were, you were streaming uh, Ed Sheeran's Shape of You um, and, a, and a really old classic, Yaz, The Only Way Is Up, two songs that you were listening to in rotation, we could also find somewhere else, somebody who's listened to the same two songs in rotation and found the songs either side of those two songs that you haven't streamed before and make a logical assumption that you might like those tracks because you've listened to those two songs in rotation and would drop those into your playlist um, as a, a nice surprise or a nice discovery into your playlist uh, as well. Okay, I'm a little uh, concerned and insulted, Alex, that you're not following my playlist on Spotify right now, but I think we can get past that. We'll get past it, but that's a, an action item on my end for after this. You, you do have a great community of users who like to share their playlists, and, and they share them on other platforms, and then they go to Spotify to actually listen to the uh, to playlist. And so from a community standpoint, you've done a great job. You've done a great job in other areas, too, including... Um, with your video model, Facebook has really struggled with their video, with their video model. Uh, you guys have a different approach. Talk about sponsored sessions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, primarily, it's a um, almost a, a reward-based value proposition that, in exchange for um, in exchange for streaming a video to to a, to a completion, will give you sort of almost a gateway to an uh, enhanced streaming experience. So that's almost the the premium version of Spotify for 30 minutes as well. So you get the, all the benefits that come with Spotify premium for 30 minutes for streaming uh, a brand's uh, video content as well on the platform. And it's, um, it's been extremely successful for us. Good. So Internet of Things, uh, you and I have talked about that. You were at CES. I know that was a big topic there this year. What role does Internet of the IoT play in how subscribers consume Spotify content? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, <clears throat> a big uh, recognition for me this year, actually, actually, it's funny you mention it, is just the, uh, we often talk about the Internet of Things or as a, almost a, a swimming in the future or this connected future. It's actually a connected world that we live in now. And I think fascinating for, for Spotify is that within the connected cars, the connected homes, all these connected devices, within these, these technologies, it's actually sound or voice that's becoming the most prevalent mode of consumption almost. And for us, that's fascinating at Spotify and the fact that we start to rethink um, the role of audio um, within our lives for, from, a, uh, from a brand perspective. It actually starts to enable more connection points for advertisers to engage their audiences in more modes, moods, and mindsets. But also, really importantly, and I think it's going to be a fundamental shift about how businesses think about marketing to to consumers is this this whole new level of engagement that perhaps was missing 
with regards to audio consumption historically. If you think about how you consume audio or consume music, often it's uh, you're often doing something else. It's almost a audio is a secondary or an accompaniment medium. Now with voice, you have the ability to be doing something else, but be able to actually engage with a piece of communication. And I think that's hugely powerful and significant for, for brands moving forward as well. So the key message for me at the moment with marketers, if you're not thinking about a sound strategy, an audio strategy, you need to be giving it far greater strategic thought and attention as to how, how will people hear your brand? What is the sound of your brand moving forward? And what is your strategy to connect with audiences through this new paradigm? I think it's a hugely exciting uh, space for, for everybody within the audio uh, industry. Nothing is more important these days than actually listening to your customer and trying to understand what it is they want. How do you incorporate uh, consumer choices with the human curation and machine learning? Yeah, I think um, I just want to just take a step back and think about music first and foremost. It's such a, an emotional experience. And I think when we at Spotify look at, I guess, aggregated data into listening behaviors, our users' listening behaviors and habits and actions at a, at a macro level, it really starts to surface all this like collective psyche or collective mood. It up how, how people are almost, it's a barometer of culture and what people are experiencing in popular culture. It's almost amplifying their life experience and they're using that to soundtrack their lives. We, we, you know, we often see this with um, popular moments in culture like the, the sonar eclipse recently. There's like a 3,000% uplift in um, streams for total eclipse of the heart by your favorite Bonnie Tyler. Um, and and even, even more recently at the Super Bowl, you know, there was a 200% uplift in streams for Prince's back catalogue after Justin Timberlake's halftime show. So it's almost becoming that barometer of culture and people respond to what's happening to them in culture through music streaming. They're telling their stories through streaming. Now, the challenge becomes for us within Spotify is there is reams and reams of data and it's almost like a needle in a haystack sometimes trying to find these stories. That's where the sort of the human curation becomes really important. The analysts at Spotify who can actually make assumptions or hypothesis or come up with a presumption and then really look to interrogate that and almost um, find the insights and the stories from the data itself as well. And I think I'm trying to remember the, one of the, the most more fascinating examples of this is on the, the day that Anthony Mooch resigned uh, from office. I think somebody found at Spotify like a, pl a playlist that was, I think, around an hour and 55 minutes in length, which was actually longer than Mooch's tenure in office. And that person actually titled the playlist accordingly. So it's almost looking to our users who are telling these sort of unique insights and unique stories through their streaming behavior. So while it's great, we have all this data. It's really important that you have um, people that can make sense and draw insights from the and stories from the data as well. As data becomes more and more important, it's exciting to see how you are evolving our music listening habits and certainly by our own curation. I'm going to have to follow you on Spotify, Alex. If somebody wants to follow you and your work or uh, check out the things that you're doing, how can they do that? Yeah, well, they obviously can find uh, my embarrassing music taste on uh, Spotify, um, which they are, but, you know, I'm proud of that. Um, nothing wrong with Debbie Gibson or Tiffany. Um, and uh, or you can find me on Twitter or from a professional standpoint, obviously you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Oh, I will be following you now for sure on Spotify. And, you know, thanks again for joining me. If you want to follow me, you can. You can find me right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic. Find me on Spotify or find me on Twitter. I like to tweet at, at Tanya Hall Radio or Facebook by searching for The Tanya Hall Show. Until next time.